Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to a quick episode of Cranjus's Corner. This will be a little laid back. I'm not going to heavily produce this, but we today are going to take a look at the Lakers defensive scheme, the rotations involved in it, and how players have been doing so far. Hopefully by the end of this, you'll have a better sense for why the Lakers are doing what they're doing, who should be doing what. When you're watching live, you'll be able to spot breakdowns more easily or, or recognize when guys are making great rotations and have a good sense moving forward as to what the Lakers can do to help minimize errors and who could, you know, see some, who, who will want to be seeing improvement from. Uh, I've got my little agenda down here. We've got some clips that I picked out ahead of time. Uh, hidden behind this diagram is some of the grading that I've done for the past two games. Haven't gotten through every game yet, but just those past two games, taking a look at who's been doing what and how well. And over here we have our diagram. We are going to be using the ultimate pen and drawn a little bit over here. So let's just talk about why rotations are needed. Um, you're going to need to rotate no matter what defensive schemes you're using defensively. There will be breakdowns. Now, if anyone gets beat 1v1, that shouldn't be the end of the play. In a good defense, if you are positioned correctly and, and aware and you know guys are, are ready to defend, if there is a breakdown, you'll be able to recover from that and do so because you have a second line of defense. If your defense is only one line, you're going to have a lot of possessions on quickly and you're going to give up a lot of points. Ideally, defensively, you can make mistakes. You can get beat and it won't cost the team points because your teammates will have your back. So defending 1v1 is one area where we'll need rotations. And we've seen the Lakers struggle with some point of attack defense um, just in general, dealing with speed, things like that. They're going to have an issue with bigger wings given who's available. Kemp is a little small to defend, really scoring wings like a Kawhi type of guy. Uh, so that's one reason you'll rotate. Another is just in ball screen situations. Um let's let's use the diagram. Let's go to the diagram over here. So if the Lakers are doing what they did against Portland, oops, I do not want to circle. We're going to erase that. Go to pencil. Okay. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one is point guard, two shooting guard, three small forward, four power forward, five is the center. I didn't label the X's. Those are the defenders as specific numbers, but we'll, uh, we'll just roll with this. So we're going to have a screen here. This uh, little line here means five is going to set a screen and one who has the ball. So we'll put a circle around him. He's going to dribble off of this screen and look to attack. Excuse my, my doodling here. Now, if you're in a drop coverage, this defender here is going to try to defend the rim and contain and not let you get past him. What the Lakers have been doing a little bit more frequently, and they've done so because they've played teams who have attacked that drop coverage or have the personnel to beat it is they've been more aggressive. And instead of just hanging out down here, hanging out around here, they are only maybe a step below the level of the screen. So as this defender is fighting over, this guy is stepping up and he's right in this area and he's not, he's trying to not let this point guard here get an immediate pull up three. And this is something that Dame Lillard can do. Shea Gilgis Alexander has done. So you need to be able to, step up and defend so let's draw this again ball screen dribbling off we've got a defender here we've got a defender coming over and so what does this give up and why do we need to rotate the roll man because you've got one two defenders on the ball even temporarily until this guy can get back in front and and this help defender can get back to his man temporarily here five rolling either in the short roll, catching like soon after he rolls, or rolling all the way to the rim is going to have openings. And because you've got two on the ball, you have a one, two, two defenders on one, two, three offensive players here on the weak side. Um, really quickly, before we dig too deeper, let's take a look at why you wouldn't rotate from the strong side, why weak side rotations are important. So here we're going to get, let's see what's going on. We've got a ball screen. Drive baseline. Wayne Ellington helps off the corner. And his help isn't wrong in that, like, he's able to stop this. But the reason he's wrong is there's no one to rotate over here. This is a tough rotation to go from corner to corner. The reason, generally, we want to rotate from the weak side is because you have more defenders. And even if it's a 3v2, 
you have a better shot as a defense than in a 2v1. Because this right now is a one, two, three player situation right here. Ellington steps over. The only shot the Lakers have is for Reeves to know this is happening and immediately run over here. And even then, you're still going to get an open three. So that is not what you want. Instead, if Ellington were to stay on his man and we've got Mello stepping in to, to defend, um, Monk is here to rotate down and we even see it. We see him start to take steps down. You've got Russ over here who can rotate over. So there are options um, on a pick and pop here. Russ is in position. So helping from the weak side instead of from that strong side corner is going to be really important. You also don't want to help when you don't need help. Um, here's an example of the Lakers helping when they just didn't need to. Even if there's a drive, if your man is in control of it, right now, Dwight, he's he's all set. This guy doesn't have a head of steam. Dwight's right with him, but Monk helps over anyway. And instead of having two weak side players, one, two, with two defenders, we now have two on the ball, and we've got Ellington in, in a tough situation here. He rotates to the first pass. Monk rotates to the second pass. It's not a bad rotation. It just wasn't necessary. So you only want to rotate when you need to rotate because any rotation that you make puts your defense under fire and they need to be on time and know where everybody's going. Communication is really important. And let's now look at some of what those rotations are and, and why who, who's really doing what. So on this situation again, and actually let me, I'll do this. We're going to move some of these around. So we've got him there. One's coming off, and we'll say it kind of looks like this. Five's already set the screen. There's a defender here taking away that immediate shot. Another defender trailing. And so now we have five rolling to the rim. And the guy who we want to defend him isn't over here because if he comes, there's no one left to rotate. We want the low man on the weak side, which is this defender right here, to be the one to step in and rotate in. They can't wait until he's there to get there. They have to be proactive. They have to be communicating. And they have to know is when this is happening, if our team is in an aggressive screen coverage, meaning not drop coverage, you need to know ahead of time that it's your responsibility to get over here and do what we'd call tagging the role man. And you can't do this just by getting on his side and putting an arm in the way. You want to get fully squared with him. Um, so that, especially because it's generally a big man being tagged by a guard or a wing, you need to have good body positioning. And just because you're small doesn't mean you can't do a good job here, but from a technique standpoint, you need to get all the way in front. And in order to do that, you need to be on time. So that's the first rotation. Rotation number one, and this is really important, this rotation number one coming from that low man on the weak side. And we've heard Frank Vogel talk about low man habits. This is what he's talking about. You need to know when to make this rotation and when not to make this rotation. On that Malik Monk clip, we saw him make a rotation he didn't need to make. It was the bad decision. Um, assuming there's there's a, a role man getting over there, this is a smart rotation. Now, because you're gone, we now have a situation where this corner shooter is open and we've got a one-two on one on the weak side. The second rotation is for this man to sink down. And this is called a sink. That first rotation is a tag if you're tagging a roll man. If there isn't a roll and it's just, hey, one beat his man off the dribble, there's no roll involved, we would call, instead of a tag, we call that trapping the box. Trapping the box, tagging. It's basically the same rotation. It's just tagging is for a roll man. Trapping the box is for a driving offensive player on ball. So number one, you have the trap. Number two... Right here, we have the sink where you sink down. And now this can be really important if, for example, number three here is in the dunker spot. Because now you, you've got, you've really got to get down there. Because if you just hang out or you try to get in between these two guys, you're in trouble because three is going to get a dump off and a dunk. Even if he's on the perimeter, though, what we really want you doing is sinking down and, and taking that man. And then a third rotation will come from over here. So... Let's uh, let's reposition a little bit. We'll erase that. And we'll say, so five now has someone on him. This guy has sunk down. Uh, we'll say one is over here and he's passed. Or he, he's ready to pass the ball. We now have a situation where this player over here 
is kind of the odd man out and we want them peeling off and, and taking over here. So we have one, two, three, four, four guys on four guys. Um, or actually really, hang on a moment, because this was a big man, this is a guard. You want the guard recovering and then the big, ideally there's a contain, he goes down here and he bumps him back over there and he bumps him back over there. But if we were to see uh, this drive happen and a, a skip pass over here, someone's got to get out there. So it might be this player. It might be that player. If it is this guy, this guy needs to see that and, and X out over that way. Um, it's, it's really about communication. There's not always going to be a set in stone rotation per se. Now, it's a little bit more straightforward if we're just seeing a straight up drive. And we'll set ourselves up this way. We're going to say one has the ball and he is driving. So we'll circle him because he has the ball. We're going to say he drives and he beats his man. You've got to have a, someone trapping the box. This guy has to sink down into five's body. And since this is a center, you, like you've really got to get into his, his legs. Um, often, when we have a situation like this, this guy's going to make, make a move towards the basket. He's not just chilling out behind the backboard. So you really have to get into his legs and do what you can to take away either a lob or an offensive rebound. And you don't have to be a big guy to do that. You just have to use leverage, get low, get into their legs, and you can be okay. And now, so we've got a trap the box, we have a sink, and now this player is now filling. And he's responsible for this 2v1 on the weak side. If he stays in, in really it's tough because we're looking at a 2D situation right here, his positioning is important. He needs to have the right depth. And by depth, I mean location between the sideline and the baseline so that he's able to get to both of these. But he needs to be able to see the ball and his guys too. So if he stay, stays right here, he's going to have a tough time seeing a drive that's happening behind him and these dudes. Cause if someone back cuts him, he's in trouble. He needs to sink down. And, and this is called filling. He's filling this two V one as the ball is driving down. He needs to be able to with his back to the baseline facing the sideline, be able to see the drive and see these players in his peripheral vision. So if someone cuts, he can cut them off. All right. So, We'll run through this again, and then we'll go through some clips. So we've got a drive from our on-ball player. This defender is going to trap the box. This defender is going to sink. This defender is going to fill. And depending on where the pass goes, he can go in different directions. This guy is not going to help because he has nobody to cover if he does help. So you just kind of stay there. <laughs> don't, don't give away good open corner threes unless this player is just a really, really poor three-point shooter. And then you might, you might stunt or stunt and recover. So those are some of the basic rotations. Um, we'll take a look at some clips, and then I can I can go through some of the teaching points on these. But that's that's the crux of what's happening here. Going back to the ball screen situation, where we had kind of this setup, where we've got this defender going over, this guy in a contain. Pass goes in here. He's rotating over. This guy's rotating down. He's staying home. If the skip pass goes to the corner, you're already there. And then one of these two can rotate over. If this, the ball goes over here, you've got to read this. You have to communicate. One of these two players is responsible for that. And then the other one needs to fill the, the remaining open spot. Those are really what we're looking at. Um, we're going to see some high tagging from the Lakers. Generally, tagging comes from the low man. But when you're doing these high aggressive screen coverages... If you are facing a big who's a danger in this area, you want to get to him early. And, and you'll see teams, instead of tagging with the low man, they'll have this guy sink in as this player is kind of stringing out these two and is looking to make this pass to the short roll. You have this player take that away. And then if the pass does go out to four, he's just looking to recover. Um, instead of having this player come out in. So we'll see a little bit of that. Let's look at some of the clips. And, and you can see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. So on this play, we're going to see the Lakers. Uh, well, let's just let it play out. Nance has the ball. 
Dame comes off the screen. We, uh, all right, so Bradley's chasing over. DeAndre Jordan is in a contain. We don't really have anybody uh, tagging the roll man here. That's a little bit open. This Getting a hand on him is not going to do it. And this is a tough situation because there are no two defenders on the weak side. There's only one. So Bazemore is in a tough spot here. Um, if this player, I think that's Norm Powell, were over here and we had a play on the wing in the corner, two defenders, it's easier because there's only one. It's tough. And that is why... Teams do not like to allow ball screens towards the middle. We'll see the Lakers often ice this. And by that, we, I mean Bradley would jump out ahead of time, not let Dame use the screen. And then instead of coming this way, DeAndre Jordan would come this way. And if you're in drop, he might be dropping. If you're doing what the Lakers are doing, he might be closer to the level of the screen. But that's, that's the idea there. If I draw that up over here, uh, let's see. Looking at a ball screen middle. And this is something that you have to be, you know, it has to be, you have to be aware of what's happening. So as the screen's attempting to come, this player has to jump out this way and really wall this off and force that offensive on ball player to have to drive this way. Because by doing so, you're keeping the single side on the strong side, and you've got your two weak side players able to rotate if necessary. So if this guy's out here containing and then fives in the short roll, you can rotate over, rotate down, and you're okay. If we let this screen happen and he goes middle and you're, you're chasing over, you're there, we've got five now rolling and two here, and often teams will have him lift up. This guy's going to be wrong. As long as you read it correctly as the on-ball player, that defender will be wrong, and you're either going to get something inside or you're going to get that lift. Or if this guy tries to help over, it's it's a tough situation just because that'll be on the strong side now. So a little bit of a, a sidetrack there. We get the contain. This isn't what I want to look at. All right, so now we've got a breakdown. And so Avery Bradley is beat. DeAndre Jordan has to step up. I'm going to use a different color. Let's use red. Actually, the court's red. I will use, well, I will try green. He's going to step up and he's going to trap the box. He's going to take Dame on. And because of that, this man is now open. This is not ideal because baseboard's on the single side here. But he is going to sink down, watch him get a body into Nance, get in front of him, take try to take away the lob, try to get into their body so they can't get an offensive rebound. And this is a situation, given where everyone is, that we'd want Avery Bradley to be the one rotating out here because there isn't a second help defender. So that's what we'd like to see. Here's what we do see. All right, so DeAndre Jordan steps up. Bazemore, because he's sinking down, if he would have stayed with his man, Nance is wide open. But he sinks down right there, deflects the pass. We see Bradley, the one rotating out, just like we talked about. And then on another drive, we see Mello actually stunting over. Um... Right here, Melo stunts, and watch Russ on this. Russ, as Melo stunts, Russ is ready. He's he's kind of, you see him ready to rotate over to the wing if uh, McCollum were to pass to Melo's guy. He shoots, they get an offensive rebound, but this was good rotational defense. Um, you you want to close the possession, but we see, if we, if we rewind it, after the point at which Dame gets that advantage on Avery Bradley, we see... Jordan, trap the box. Bazemore, sink down. Bradley, rotate out. We've got five defensive players on five offensive players. Just got to get some bodies to, to rebound. So that's that's what that can look like. Let's take a look at um, another play. Let's see here. On ball screen. Pop. All right, here we go. On ball screen. Dwight Howard, no, is that Dwight? Yeah, I think that's Dwight. Uh, he is at the level of the screen. He's not going to give up a pull-up three to Simons here. We've got Reeves chasing over top. And look where Monk is. This just happened, and Monk is already in position. Um, watch Monk on the weak side. This is really what we're looking at. We're going to watch Monk, and then we're going to watch Ellington. So Monk is ready. He's there. He's going to be there. He's in position. Ellington blows this. So if we rewind, we reset, 
let's get to right here. Monk has the roll. The pass is coming into this short roll. Monk's there. That's taken care of. Ellington needs to read this. He needs to see his man's in position. And he's responsible now to get out to this corner shooter. That is that is the missed. That, that would be a sink is what we're missing right here. So that's, that's where the breakdown occurs. This is a situation where you say, oh, Monk, why did you help? But that's not right. Monk did what he was supposed to do. This isn't Monk's fault. This is Ellington missing a rotation. Let's watch another one where we're going to see a bad sink. Melo does not look pleased. All right, so we got a double ball screen. Nothing. Here comes another. <laughs> this is an interesting one. Um, we've got a big on big screen here. And look at that length. This really has to be lobbed in there. So again, Monk from the weak side rotates in. He's here to tag the roll. Reeves is now the man who is responsible for these weak side players. So he's seeing the play. He needs to get enough depth. He needs to sink down a little bit more and get his back to the baseline to where he can quickly flip his hips and get to the corner or close out in front of him. Those are his two possible rotations here. But if he stays facing the ball, he might be in a better position to try to get a deflection, but it's going to be harder for him to flip his hips and rotate. So watch him facing the ball. Oh, has to flip all the way around and is just a tad late rotating out. The shot is missed, but that, in you know, whoop, have to flip all the way around to get out to the corner. If he's starting from this position and a you know half step back, he's perfectly aligned to run straight and close out. And he also is in a position to be able to get out to that corner. So just a really small thing, but that's a situation where he was at the right depth. He just did not have the, um, he wasn't in the wrong right body position. We saw Monk out here. He was in the right spot. He was just facing this way instead of facing this way. You got to turn your head, not your whole body. All right, now we're going to take a look at a situation where we don't see a fill. And this is really where the Lakers breakdowns have been. They're trapping the box well. They're, they're, they're stopping the initial attack. It's getting into the second and the third things that they have issues. Now, <laughs> lots of issues here, all from Russ um, on this play. And, and don't take individual plays to say, you know, Russ is always bad at this. This is one play. But we see ball screen. Russ doesn't do anything to contain. Bazemore's on Dame's back. This is Russ needs to do something to contain here. He needs to trust his help. We truly, this is a pop. Reeves is here for the pop. Russ needs to realize that Bazemore's not going to stop this drive. The first thing he makes a mistake with is not containing, but that's not what we're looking at. So from this point, looking at what we're looking at, who's rotating? If you rotate strong side, we've got an open corner shooter, no help coming. Dwight is the guy. He's going to step in here. He's going to trap the box. And then it's on Reeves to rotate down and sink down there. And then Russ is in a position where he has, there are two offensive players. One's over here somewhere. One's over here somewhere. He's going to be the one. He's the third defender in this action. First rotation, trap the box with Dwight. Second rotation, Reeves sinks. This is a fill for Russ. And he does not execute. So boom, the drive's cut off. Drive's cut off. There's no shot at the rim. Reeves is, is sinking down. He had a lot of ground to cover, but he's getting there. Uh, we'd love him to be a you know half second earlier, but he's there. This is, Russ needs to be standing much closer. Russ needs to be standing right here and able to close out to either of these two players. He is not. He is, he, he's taking the, the rest of the playoff. So this is a breakdown on him. And these are really critical errors. The shot doesn't go in and... You know, remember on defense, it's not only when the shot goes in that somebody made a mistake. That was a mistake. That's something they need to, need to take a look at in the film room. We're going to see another example where the Lakers do not fill. All right, so getting back into defense, not quite transition, but the Lakers aren't set. Rondo gets beat here. I don't, you know, fully blame him, but it happens. He's beat. Now we've got a situation where DeAndre Jordan is going to rotate in and he's going to trap the box and stop the drive. Avery Bradley is on the sink and then someone needs to fill. 
Let's see what happens. Okay. This was smart by Bradley. He worked inside out. He took away the dump off here. But we're seeing Bazemore completely observe the play. He needs Bazemore needs to be over here in a position where he can rotate out to McCollum or his guy. That's a tough rotation. That's not Avery Bradley shouldn't need to go all the way from the rim to the three-point line. If this pass is on target instead of at McCollum's feet, this is a wide open three-pointer. But a good teaching point here that Bradley does is he works inside out. He's got two guys here. He it it given just where the ball is, where those guys are, where he is and where his teammates are, none of his teammates have any shot to get right here but his teammates do have a shot given how long it takes to you know for the ball to travel if they're paying attention and Bazemore's over here he can rotate over to this in time so Bradley works inside out takes the inside man and forces you know his teammates to have his back and they just don't on this play let's actually look at a play where Reeves doesn't work inside out and it results in a, a bad situation so let's see. All right. Portland has the ball. We've got a ball screen here. That actually wasn't bad. Let's take a look at that. So we had Ellington's, who may have not needed to rotate here. Actually, yeah. So we've got a short roll. So Ellington rotates in to tag. Russ is in a position where he's, he's going to rotate out. So he's got these two guys on the pass. He goes to the first one. Ellington rotes back, rotates back there. Mello recovers. So everybody recovers here. This is this is a good rotation. On the drive, though, because Ellington, he takes this look right there. Ellington hops, and then he knows where he's need, he needs to go. He needs to immediately know where he needs to go. This might be a rust thing. He hasn't really played. So, But either way, we've got a situation where there's a breakdown. And let's see what we're looking at. Mello. Traps the box. Monk rotates down. Monk was on, I believe, that yeah, Nance. And Monk is going to rotate down. And now Reeves needs to work inside out. Reeves doesn't really recognize what's going. He, he takes a step towards the corner. His man's back here. He needs to take Nance because Monk is, is, is out that way. And actually, you know what? <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong. I hope you were you were yelling at your computer that Tim was wrong because Monk needs to work inside out, not Reeves. So on this play, Monk's that first rotator. He needs to stick with Dance. And then Reeves, who correctly takes a step in this direction, he needs to be the one to, to mark that back line, back line rotation. Okay, we are back. My laptop is plugged in. I know it's we're like 30 minutes into this, but... Hopefully, these are getting repetitive in that you know what's supposed to happen. We're going to take a look here at one more. All right. Ball screen. Let's see. Let's get us to... All right. Here's, here's what we're looking at. DeAndre Jordan is containing. Bazemore was chasing over the top. DeAndre was here to take away the immediate shot. And this is what you want to do. You're, you're running this coverage so that Dame Lillard can't just drill threes on you. Because of this, we've got Reeves who's going to come in and he's going to try to take a charge here. Rondo's responsibility is here on the weak side. He's going to sink down. Hopefully somebody, one of these guys, probably Bazemore, we want him rotating over. Let's see what happens. Reeves tries to take the charge. Rondo was there. So, I mean, you did what you, you could do. <laughs> Nurkish did a good job avoiding this. Rondo sinks down. The, that corner pass is, you know, taken away. And honestly, Nurkic hitting this pass is going to be really hard to do. But really what we're looking for is instead of Bazemore just following this play and jockeying, we want him recognizing that a rotation is happening and Rondo's in a tough spot, and Bazemore needs to be the guy taking these two offensive players. And if he could just hang out around the free throw line and then rotate if necessary, that's really what we want him doing instead of kind of walking in and being the third Laker defender in the paint. He, you shouldn't need him there to rotate or to, to rebound. So that's a mistake from Bazemore not filling. 
Let's take a look at one more. What do we have here? This is all from the same game. This is all from like three quarters of basketball. All right. So we got a breakdown. What are we seeing? We have a breakdown. Bazemar, whoop. Screen comes. And so potentially this could have been Bazemar thinking they're going to ice, in which case Mello should be down here to contain. If, I mean, maybe not. Maybe CJ just rejected the screen coverage screen and beat the coverage but either way it doesn't matter either way we have an advantage here and again same situation deandre jordan has to step in to trap the box take away the drive wall that off russ is here on the weak side he's gonna rotate out he's see how he has depth um he has an open stance or a closed stance here meaning he's facing the ball and this will help him get deflections it's gonna mean if one of these guys cuts he's he's not seeing it so that's not ideal that's the, the pros and the cons of facing this way instead of having your back to the baseline. But he's rotating down. And then Mello here needs to recognize that, you know, one's there, two's there, three's there. Bazemore is engaged here on this. Um, and Mello has to just sink down a little bit and play both of these offensive players. So it's not always, there's, it's not always going to be a straightforward thing. Mel, uh, Bazemore is really in that play. Um, he, in that last play that we looked at, was the one we wanted to rotate off. This is one where Mello needs to read the situation and kind of be a little bit more part of this. Because Russ rotates down, and there's just nobody left. Thankfully, Portland misses the shot, but these are the breakdowns that are happening and happening and happening. And sometimes the offense hits the open shot. Sometimes they don't. But it was really worse defensively than we realized. Here's an example of the high tag I was talking about. We're going to see, instead of the low man helping, we're going to see, yep, Bazemore there. And this is really, a, he's it's him. It's him doing both things. He doesn't have help on this. So he's in position. If this pass were to go in, he'd be there. But now he is also responsible for rotating out to his guy. This can work. It's also very beatable. And we see Portland go to a couple sets to do so. Here he's able to recover because the offense is just standing still. But then we see Portland go to a couple attacks that beat it pretty well. Here's one play where we've got a high ball screen. Ellington is going to sink in here and take away. I should stop saying sink because he's not doing a sink. He's, he's tagging this roll man with the, the, sh the high tag on the short roll. Because he's stepping down, he is taking himself out of position for this next screen. And, and really, it's not even his initial man. His initial man is going to cut to the rim. And if the switch isn't here, his man's going to be open for a lob. Russ recognizes that, calls out the switch. And now we see Dame run up. And Dame, if Ellington wasn't doing this high tag and he was just covering Dame, he'd be able to chase around this pretty well. But he, trying to body up, trying to belly up to the roll man, puts himself in a position where it's tougher to guard that next action. So this is just a really, really smart set play to attack what the defense is doing. Here's another one. Again, trying to attack that high tag. And this one's not all that you know complicated. You just get Dame in a situation where his man has to really commit to this, and then you're leaving Dame Lillard open. <laughs> That's not someone you want to leave open. But if you don't make that tag, we've got an open tag man, or an open roll man, you know, run into the rim, probably drawing a foul. Like, look at this. At the point where the pass is made, if Reeves is standing here, this is a dunk. Rondo's not getting over there. That's a dunk. So this is just a really tough, you know, smart setup. There's nothing really complicated here going on. It's just player positioning. So that's how you beat that high tag. But that's something the Lakers switched to in the first quarter to try to adjust to how Portland was attacking their initial rotations. And then we saw Portland in that like second, third quarter period really attack what the Lakers were doing with smart set plays. Uh, one quick play here, picking and popping. Let's see. We've got a pick. The Lakers ice this. He's popping. Either No matter how it sets up, there's a pop here. 
and we are not expecting the low man to tag that pop. We expect the high guy to tag that pop. So this is on Monk to rotate over. He's late. It's a fairly open shot. It's not hit, but when the pop is happening, it's on the, the higher player to, to take care of that. So let's set that up. Here's our defense. I'll switch back to blue. Pick. He has the ball. He's going to dribble this way. He's popping. He's fighting over. He's here containing. Maybe he's in a drop. Maybe he's in, a, in an aggressive coverage. Either way, he's not getting out to this pop. So it's on this guy right here to take that pop. And then you can rotate behind it one of several ways. It's always about taking away the first option because you never know when a pass is going to go awry or a skip pass is going to go to somebody's feet or over their head. You as a defense are taking away the immediate threat and forcing the offense to one, make the right decision and then two, execute it. And then three, make the shot and you defend inside out and, you know, take away options as, as they're used. And that's really what the Lakers are trying to do with this. If we take a look at like what could happen if they're not rotating, you know, if we, we talk about, Hey, these guys are struggling. Let's find a way to not rotate. Here's what drop coverage can look like against Dame Lillard. That's not ideal. <laughs> we have three off ball defenders. None of them need to worry about rotating, but this situation has someone chasing over top and Bradley did a decent job avoiding the screen. DeAndre Jordan's dropping too much here. You want him to be like another step forward, but even then that shot will be open if he's two steps or more below the level of the screen, which is what drop coverage is. So that is really the give and take that you have. And now when the Lakers are playing teams where that don't have pull-up shooters, they can go to this drop coverage more. Here's Dwight. He's more on a drop, but he's still out of position. And what Portland does just about as good as anyone is they'll set screens higher up the court. Instead of the screen being here, it's it's up here. Dwight would have been at the level of the screen or in a position if the screen were set lower, but because it's set higher, he's still out of position. And again, the three off-ball players, they don't need to rotate. So if you've got a bunch of poor rotators and you're playing a team that doesn't hit pull-up threes, go to drop coverage, and the Lakers have. But they've played several teams in a row that are either attacking the, that well or you know just hit those pull-up threes, and it's forcing the Lakers to need to rotate. Switching is another option to try to prevent rotations. Um, so hopefully you have an idea now of why the teams rotate, either a breakdown on a drive or tagging a roll man. We went over basic uh, tags and, and trapping the box. We understand sinking, who's supposed to do it, when they're supposed to do it, how they're supposed to position their body. The fill, same thing. We looked at high tags, we looked at pop rotations, and we talked about how you can limit rotations. Now, one last thing as I drop my pen. Uh, let's take a look at how the Lakers have done so far. So this is just through two games. This, you know, it could have been somebody's, you know, a bad day for someone or a good day for someone. Matchups matter, all of that. If we're looking at what's resulting in the team needing to rotate, and we look at players being beaten at the point of attack, I don't quite have like a success rate here. I just look at how often it's happening. Avery Bradley is getting beat at the point of attack. Austin Reeves has been beaten at the point of attack. Um, the G League, or the, the two-way guys haven't played all that much, so we're not going to look too much at that. But those are the two guys who have been causing a lot of the breakdowns, requiring the defense to trap the box. We've had players also just kind of lose their man floating around or they get back cut. Rondo has had that happen to him a lot. Russ has had that happen to him more than Rondo, but half as frequently. Um, he's just played way more minutes. Looking at ball screen defense, there are times where players are fighting over well and they're getting back in position, which Bradley's done well. Reeves has also done well. So both of these guys at the point of attack 1v1 and ISO have been beaten a little bit, but in ball screens, they've done a really good job. Monk has struggled. Russ has struggled. Rondo and Ellington have been good in limited time. Chaser defense, just chasing guys off screens, off ball. Ellington's been really good. Reeves has been really good. Russ has been okay. Uh, Bazemore hasn't been great, but the, the, these sample sizes, sample sizes are really small. At the team level here, ball screen defense has been good. Chaser defense, not as good. Now let's talk about uh, trapping the box or tagging the roll, man. I, I grouped them together. 
And the bad ones here can be either you were late or you didn't do it <laughs> or you your technique on it was poor or you tried to tag or trap the box when it wasn't your rotation. Like in that Ellington clip where he helped off the strong set corner. That is bad. We don't want that. That was his one bad one. Here we see who's been more active and how they've fared. Mello, this stands out to me. Mello's done a really good job. He's rotated very well. Bazemore's done a very good job being that initial first rotator. Russ has done a very good job. He's been very active and, and very efficient. Um, Ellington, Reeves, Monk, they've been decent. Bradley hasn't had to do it all that much. Rondo's been good. Like, this is a lot of, you know, guys executing well. AD's been poor. This is something that stands out to me. Um, not not great. And uh, Seku Tamboya, he uh, was trying to do a little bit too much defensively. If you may have noticed in that game against Portland, in the fourth quarter, he was everywhere. And that was, be that was because he was just kind of ball hawking and running to where the ball was, even if it wasn't his job. So he, I think he got like a steal off of that maybe. Um, but he, you know, the defense got burned a couple times because he, it wasn't his rotation to make. Dwight and DeAndre, they've been good. But something I'll have you notice here is these guys often aren't the ones doing this because they're usually, if it's a ball screen, they're in the ball screen. They're containing. So it's going to be on that power forward or that low, well, really, it's going to be on the weak side low man. So that's often mellow. It's going to be LeBron a bunch when Bron's playing, but he didn't play in these two games. Um, neither did THT or Ariza. I'll hide them. But Russ has been really active and very good at this. This this first rotation, 76%, pretty good. Three out of four times, you know, they're stopping that first attack. When it gets to the second and third, you know, elements of the defense, that's where the Lakers have had breakdowns. And so when we go down over here to sinking, that second rotation, that helping the helper, this is where we have some issues. Mellow, not good. AD, not good. Ellington, not good. Reeves, not good. Bradley, not good. Monk has been good at this. Rondo's been good at this. Russ has been good at this. Bazemore's been very good at this. All very small samples, but that's just how they've fared in these two games. And we see the team success goes from 76 to 60%. When we look at that third rotation, it gets even worse, 39%. This is really bad. If you're a defense and you get a drive, and you're going to make the skip pass, but you don't skip it out to the opposite corner, you, you make, you know, you read the two defenders and skip to the, the third open man, there usually isn't a third rotating defender for the Lakers. Baysmore and Mello have been awful at this. Um, 80's one for one. Bradley's two for three. Rondo's two for two. Russ has not been good. Um, we saw Russ in one of those clips not make the rotation. So this these two areas are where the Lakers really need to improve. And, and I've... If you follow my coverage, Melo's been somebody who I've praised but also criticized, and it's because he's improved this first element a good bit, and he's had to. He's been, like with Ron out, Melo is making a lot of these rotations. It's these next two that are happening less frequently, only eight times compared to 16 here. But it's still, you know, a decent volume, and he needs to be better at those. Then we get into, for the bigs in the ball screens themselves, how are they doing in drop coverage and in aggressive coverages? Drop coverage, the Lakers have been really good. Whether it's AD or DeAndre Jordan or Dwight Howard, they've been pretty solid. In aggressive coverages, we saw like Russ on that one play just not contain a drive. Um, Melo's been decent. He's a fairly mobile guy. Um, Huff did well in, in short minutes. Dwight and DeAndre have fared better than I thought that they would. And AD has not been good. He's lost contain multiple times. Um, more so in that OKC game where he played way more minutes. He was getting beat around the corner. He was he was the big man stepping up here to help guard the action where one's got the ball. He's dribbling this way. This is AD right here. And AD was coming out and then get, getting beat around the corner or going too far and getting beat inside. He was losing contain and it was bad because then you have a, a roll man and a driver on this one defender and, and that's a no-win situation. So that needs to improve. That is something that I've been disappointed in. It's only two games. This doesn't mean AD's bad at it or he'll continue to be bad at it. But in those two games, and you know, he hurt his thumb in one of them, that did not look good. So this, I hope, gives you a glimpse of what's causing the breakdowns, who's rotating, and how well they're rotating at the team level. It's first rotation, good. Second rotation, not as good. Third rotation, really poor. And the Lakers in drop coverage have been really solid. And this is when they don't need to rotate. 
when they run these aggressive screen coverages, blitzing or showing or, or catch hedging, or soft hedges, this is when you require the rest of these. And this itself has not been good. So hopefully the Lakers start to play some teams here where they're able to run drop coverage. In those situations, they'll fare better, at least as things stand today. But, you know, for the playoffs, this is all going to matter a lot. So we're going to track this game by game moving forward and see this growth as it happens. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us. I know this went a bit, uh, this went longer than I thought it would, but I'm hoping you leave this with a really good sense of what you're looking at when you're watching the games live, not just on film, and uh, can really enjoy these Lakers and and track the growth as it's happening and recognize, you know, Bradley's ball screen defense and Melo's trap in the box and tagging roll men and same thing with Russ. So that's all for today. I've been Cranchus McBasketball and this is Cranchus's Corner. Thanks. Thanks.